dressed for today. Yeah, how God, God I am. <laughs> you know, maybe this is why I'm so cranky, because politics seems to have gotten ugly in this election. And a survey from the Pew Research Center found that Republicans, Pew. Democrats, yes, Pew, <laughs> dislike each other more now than at any time in the history of their research. Now, Republicans said they think Democrats are immoral, lazy, and dishonest, while Democrats find Republicans closed-minded. That's it? <laughs> All right. Why do you think it's worse now than it's ever been before? It's this election. It's this, this election, election season. I mean, we've seen in, in past elections that, uh, and past presidencies, quite frankly, that they've been able to work across the aisle. I think the tone has changed so we much. We don't have changed, yeah. but I, I also think we're very limited. We have basically two choices. And, well, I guess if you want to count the Green Party, I know, but I'm just saying we need more than just um, two main parties. I feel like there's no room for the fiscally conservative and maybe the socially liberal person or vice versa. We were talking about this mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're, they're trying to fit us into a small little box, and it's creating this unhealthy atmosphere where we can't just agree to disagree anymore. We have to it's disagree and hate one another. Well, the, the, the venom started in the early 90s with uh, basically talk radio started to get more and more powerful and right wing talk radio started to really pummel their position. And then Fox News came in with their uh, sort of unbalanced right wing position. And then you had MSNBC coming in with their left wing position. And so that's, I think, what happened. That's exactly what I think happened. Because previous to that, Republicans and Democrats got along much better. They cooperated so with each other. So you're saying it kind of created this divide. Yes, I yeah. think so. Don't you think, though, it's changed since uh, President Obama became President Obama? What changed? The tone. The tone. Well, yes. between well he's the, the first parties. president that a congressman in, at the State of the Union yelled out, you lie. Yeah. No one ever did that to a president before. No. Maybe they did, but I don't There's know about it. disrespect of the yeah. office that I think yeah. has trickled down. Absolutely. Well, I also think that it's also because the... There is an insidious third party. There is another party in there, and they sort of tried to usurp the Republicans, uh, and then uh, the they kind of disappeared. <laughs> the you know, the, the Republicans, kind of the moderate Republicans, all disappeared, mm -hmm. and so now we have the Tea Party and all of their rhetoric. I, I think that this this disrespect, uh, just in general, mm -hmm. uh, I think you're probably right. A lot of it started with. You know, my country right or wrong, and if you're not me, you're not a real American. That all came about, I think, in the 90s. And are we supposed to have like, the money, too? I mean, I know it's always been there, but when you think about the groups that get supported, you know, like the NRA putting money into, mm -hmm. and it, it happens on both parties, but I feel like there's more pressure than ever that they, you can't budge on something because you have so many backers, financial backers, which I think True. skews the whole ability of mm -hmm. these people to represent the Isn't that the why they were the saying don't, that, that yeah. we shouldn't have? I don't know what happened, but I, I, I woke up and stuff changed. Yeah. I thought you weren't supposed to have... A way to float lots of money into a party. Well, the Supreme Court you know, changed that. Well, you know, and oh, yes. so again, I'm just gonna say it again. Hey, SC Supreme Court, <laughs> y'all may have changed the the landscape so much that you've hindered us as a as a society. So maybe we need to take a look at some of Citizens these things. Citizens United. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. Citizens United. But just the way that we do everything, we all collectively say we don't want to do this anymore. And then someone comes along and pushes and pushes and pushes. And then the law changes and we don't get to say, hey, wait, wait, I thought you said we weren't going to do this. I think it's going to change, though. I mean, I think when you look at the law, it's sort of a breathing and living thing. And the pendulum always uh, just, you know, goes back and forth. And so we had this big backlash over the past eight years where Republicans and Democrats almost have this visceral hate for each other. But don't you think it's time that things are, are going to swing the other way? I don't, I, I, I don't know if they will swing the other way. I think that we have to first, you know, I believe that when the law is the law, you kind of have to go from there. If mm -hmm. I have rights and it says so, then I want you to respect that I have those rights, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I think once we get back to the individual respect for each other, mm -hmm. we might be able to eke out, because we're always going to fight about what you believe and what I believe. That's that's what you do. You have a party on Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uncle Ernie is, you know, hanging from the rafters Uncle talking Ernie. about it. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, we all have had to give, you know, and saying stuff where your face hits the floor, yeah. and just as you're about to go off on Uncle Ernie, the turkey comes. Yes. <laughs> right. yeah. So you so you learn how to just like, okay, we, we can agree to disagree. Yeah. But I think until we get this as an individual thing, I think it's going to be know, rough. You talk about the pendulum swinging, but yeah. I also think we're also taking our cues from government. And right now, I don't really see any compromise on either, either side. Yeah. And that's really frustrating. They can't get a thing done. Well, and that started. now is having a, a ripple effect it. on the rest of the country and how we enact. No, don't help. blame both parties. Right. The Republican Party started their obstructionism when Obama got into office. Can't blame both parties. Everybody always says there's two time. sides to every story. They're not all the time. But you know what? I think the, the whole point is what you just said is part of the problem. It's got to start with, it doesn't matter who started this. Let's start fresh here now. That was the point. It yeah. doesn't matter who switch. started it. Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't. And Last word. Go. We haven't gone anywhere. We haven't gone anywhere. Well, it, it'll be interesting to see because if Hillary 
is the becomes the president, yes. uh, we're going to have another big crazy roundup on our hands because, you know, when... Uh, it was the Mitch, who was it? Mitch, Mitch McConnell. No, Mitch McConnell said the day, you know, after the, after uh, Obama oh. was elected, yes. we're going to do everything we can to make sure he does not get anything he's done. He's a one-term right. president. He, and he, he said, said he's a one-term president. Yeah. So I'm, I'm concerned, you know, which is why I'm not sure, because now we have a woman coming in, and we've heard some of the things people had to say about women. I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah, but <laughs> if, Trump, if Trump wins, he won't even get a whole term, in my opinion. He'll be impeached around halfway through. You think so? Are you the only, the only peach I want to hear about from him is Peach Melba. We'll be right back. <laughs> How do you tell your child they zest with? Welcome back. I'm about to tell you. Childhood obesity is a major health issue in America, but experts warn parents to avoid making comments about their child's weight because it can have a devastating effect later on, especially for girls. Mm -hmm. I think people don't sometimes realize that what you as an adult think is a funny mm -hmm. comment can be really, you know, devastating to a child. Uh, this UK, you shouldn't do it. Don't even make uh, comments about your wife's weight. Never mind, you know, that, that nobody wants to hear it. Right. How fat they are, how much weight they've gained, any of that. No one ever wants yeah. to hear any the little of Little kids, I mean, little you know, kids, my parents, yeah. adults yeah. kind of take it. My yeah. parents yeah. make comments about my weight and I think um, they, their reasoning was that they wanted to teach us to stay healthy mm -hmm. for ourselves but also for each other but I, right. I can trace back I also had older sisters so a lot of times weight came up I remember being 13 and putting on a leotard for gymnastics and my mom she won't remember this sorry mom but she looked and she was like you know that purple makes you look a little bigger than you are I was I hadn't even like I was prepubescent I wasn't putting weight on I was tiny mm -hmm. and that's where I traced starting to worry about what I ate in a meal mm -hmm. and, and it yeah. still haunts me I have a really crappy body image and I think it's because at such a young age, I started the yo-yoing of what I looked like. And mm. it's right, your mom probably, I mean, I'm sure she didn't have that intention necessarily, no, but no. we take what our family says about our body a lot more personally than we might of take. Course. A stranger, I know my daughter is, she's, she's thicker, she's sturdy. And I remember my husband picked her up and he's like, wow, Caroline, you're getting really heavy. And I, you know, she's almost nine and she's, mm -hmm. girls her age are starting to have body issues already. And I was like, just be careful how we describe her. Don't say she's heavy or she's big. Just say, she's wow, strong. you're really strong and you're exactly. sturdy. It's just, you just have to be aware of how you're communicating, especially with your kids. Like, I got, I got a bad rap for my daughter because I used to say, oh, my God, I look so fat in this outfit. I said it about myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never said anything about her weight, mm -hmm. but she turned on me for that. So you can't say anything. Well, I think it's because I... <laughs> but, but I think it is... <laughs> right? I know. But I think as children, we... Um, we play those tapes over and over again in our heads when we become adults. But I had sort of the exact opposite. I mean, we have, I have an aunt in my family that's, that's very large, and she always said, you can never use the F word. Don't ever use the F word. So we never use the fat word around. But my mom was Large old. is not great either. Yeah, you can't use any of those words because words, versions, because you know, words like really logs. matter. But I always thanked my mom because, you know, uh, growing up, my mom always told me how beautiful I was. She always told me um, how strong I was. She always told me how smart I was. And I'm not a conventionally, you know, looking I'm not a conventional beauty and when people would come up to me and say that I was unattractive or even on Twitter when people say things I'm like what's wrong with you but I know it's because I play my mom's tapes in my head and I try to do that for my kids why not I play them in my head I'm like you got the problem I got the problem yeah. I never had any issues with her <laughs> I just didn't and my kid my kid didn't either I mean she you know it's I think I think time spent around friends can be dangerous also and magazines yeah, yeah. and well less magazines more friends because people start comparing themselves yeah and suddenly you don't also realize that your metabolism changes when you hit 38 39 for things change and you have to be aware of it yeah. <laughs> but, but you have to be aware of it but it doesn't mean that you look bad but I think yeah. Folks get together and say, well, you know, you don't look old. You don't look like you used to. And it's like, you That's know. That's worse. Well, but yeah, but nothing looks like it of course used to. Not. Unless it's chock full of preservatives. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, right? Us Weekly's Jackie Moran here. Want to know the... preview with a look at the hot trends that you want to be a part of and the ones that you just need to say goodbye to. So everyone, please welcome Us Weekly's video correspondent, Jackie Moran. Welcome, Jackie. Hi. Great to have you, Jackie. Okay, the first fashion trend is monochromatic. Yes. So let's that? put like that, that. Right. Very let's slimming. make it easy. Very slimming. Simple crash course. 
If you want to pick a color for fall, this plum is so rich and gorgeous. And what I love is we're seeing another trend that I'm rocking today, the colored lace, which is such a romantic contrast to her edgy moto and her rockin' hat and the lace-up detail. We're seeing that continue from yeah. summer into fall. And what I love about her booty is it's a color block, so it ties it in without overdoing it. Her, 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 her booty. Her booty. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I am referring to the booties. Don't get me wrong, the booty is in this season, but we're talking about those about booties, those right? Legs. Those are not maroon. Uh, yes, but you know what? That's okay because you can break it up and you can have fun with accessories because a lot of women are afraid to go from head to toe. But I say do it. You can't go wrong, and it's easy to match. Yeah, there you go. You can just reach in your closet and everything works. I would think well it's out. more slimming, Mama. Yeah, right? lengthening too, which is great. Okay, um, so the next style. What we're actually seeing is celebrities are giving their gowns a night off and opting for pants on the red carpet. So what I love about Kelsey's suit is that this window pane print is very chic, very timeless, but she's pairing it with gold. Gold accessories are a girl's best friend, ladies. Metallics are always in. A simple silk cami underneath, so it's very night out. I and like then, that. Right? It's yeah. very chic, very classic. And then she could always swap the basic blouse for the office. So there's a lot of mixing and matching capability. But what I love about this classic oversized menswear coat is you throw on one piece and you're on trend. If you have your favorite skinny legging, a basic blouse, you're done and ready to go. But here, it's about color therapy, everyone. Mm -hmm. Serenity Blue, one of the biggest colors of the year. So just updating the color of your coat and you're ready to go. Joy, sure, you have those leather pants in your closet, don't you? Yeah. But Serenity Blue is not my shade. No, I think it's like blue. Is <laughs> <laughs> You're not that peaceful? Come on. No. We can all that's enjoy That's not a full serenity. color, that color. But well. that's what's great about it. We're showing you unexpected swift two-pairing color, and it's surprising people for fall. Then you can layer that over time into winter, too, oh, with right. your chunky And we're talking, we're talking about great fabrics, too, Jackie, yeah. such as suede. Yes. So whatever you say in fall, say it in suede, ladies. Everyone can do it. You know what I love about it? We're seeing color in fusion. So look at how gorgeous Rachel looks in this BCBG Mac dress. It's so fun and flirty, but it's all about that luscious pop of color. She could wear that now with summer sandals and then wear it into fall. And the trick is accessorizing it. So we see that floral neck scarf, the skinny scarf. Have you ladies tried the skinny scarf yet? No. No. You have There's to. A skinny it's scarf? a must. It's a must. You Mine's on the diet. <laughs> And also, we're seeing the suede booty, so don't be afraid to do suede on suede. And the update to the summer round bag, we're seeing the octagon bag. We're getting a little geometric on you, everybody. Yeah. So, under $100, right? I love the cognac So the idea is that suede is usually in brown, and now it's all these colors? Exactly. It really gives it a nice pop. And look at just how gorgeous she looks from head to She's toe. She's gorgeous. You are gorgeous, but the dress is helping her even I'm stand out in a crowd even more. <laughs> Florals were big last year, but are yeah. they still? Well, people think of florals. Don't you feel like everyone thinks it's only for vacation? Right. Well, florals are very moody oh. for fall. So if you want to be a little moody, Joy, you could go for the Judy, moody floral. I'll go you with think her. you could go for that? You're angry. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm not big on flowers around on clothing. I like them in my yard. That's it. Well, how about... <laughs> Joy, okay, I'm going to get Joy into it because what I love about this is it adds edge because it's leather, but faux leather, everybody, so it's affordable. The outfit, top and bottom, is $100. The top is H&M, the skirt is Zara. But what's great about these accessories, they're both under $100 from Aldo. I'm going to race you definitely for the suede pumps because I think those are really chic and they look so expensive. But they're under $100. Nice. Very nice. Gorgeous, girl. Okay, so we talked about suede and floral, but yep. velvet. Velvet. Velveteen. Okay, I really want to talk this through everybody. Velvet is rough. It is tough, but let me say this. I'm thinking on the runways, it may look very heavy, okay. but we're giving you options. I was thinking Austin Powers when you right. said velvet. You don't want to be like, yeah, baby, but we are <laughs> saying yeah, baby, because I love that the top alone, you can just do a top in the off the shoulder, yeah. easy breezy a fit. skin showing. Right? A little bit. A woman's shoulder is always flattering, no matter who you are. And the choker trend gives it that 90s vibe. So just with a simple skinny jean, her suede cut out peep toes, a little leopard bag, so she's having fun. Her shoes are great, by Aren't the Aren't they gorgeous? Mark Fisher, absolutely mm -hmm. love the navy color. Really, if you look at it, it's a simple jewel tone. Simple jewel tones always work in fall. And then if you really want to have fun, have that swing dress moment. And I love that what we're seeing here is the pattern helps break it up. And it's so opulent. Look at how it's just illuminating on camera. That's what it's about. It's really a luxe statement. So this is kind of your luxe pattern. We all love over-the-knee boots, don't we? Well, they're not that comfortable. I know comfortable ones, Joy. Joy These are DSW. A lot of velvet, you could look like a couch. you got to watch well, that. Well, we've had that issue on the red carpet. We won't retrace it, but that's why this is still playful and flirty. That's so you, just, just enough. enough yeah. Right? Just don't enough. Ladies, you look lovely. Velvet. Luscious. And finally, I know we have two more looks from 
some very special ladies in our lives. We have Hollywood superstars coming out right we now. We do. Here we go. Who trained them? Sarah, they are giving us <laughs> one way from head to toe. But what's really working in here is that <laughs> Sarah's giving us her Zoolander is what she's giving us. Is it a walk off right now? Do we need to have a walk off? Lose a walk -off. You already told me. Tell us what about this. Outfit is talking on miles to me, ladies. You are just speaking so many volumes. What are they what this is, is the capelet trend. So you could do the capelet as a jacket, like this gorgeous one from Bloomingdale's and that incredible camel, or go for the capelet dress. If you really want to vamp it up and give some red carpet sex appeal, you got to really pose, pose and twist, pose and twist. Pose and twist? Yep, pose and twist. That's what that is. I <laughs> thought it was bend and snap. Oh, but that's okay. it. <laughs> Wait, give us a blue steel before take you go. Take the blue jacket steel. off. Blue steel, oh, steel ladies. I Sarah, like take the jacket off. Let's look at the dress. It's attached to my mic, and I have oh. nursing. Okay, I'm not going to you are such a good sport, oh everyone. Ladies, you. you look lovely. Our Thank thanks to you. Jackie Moran for more information on any of these looks. Check out our website. We'll be right back. But hey, what's up, world? It's this way. Get ready for a pop culture preview of the movies, the TV. So I'm super excited for the fall because it's the high season for movies, TV shows, new music. So here with a round table of everything we'll be into, please welcome Gray Drake, senior editor for Rotten Tomatoes. Jessica Shaw, host of Entertainment Weekly Radio on Sirius XM. And Sway Calloway, on-air talent for VH1 and host of Sway in the Morning on Sirius XM. Welcome to all of you guys, but we're going to start with you, Gray. You're going to tell us all about the movies. Yes, first, Magnificent Seven is the one you got to watch for. This is a remake of the old Steve McQueen film, except this time it stars Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke, and they, it reunites them with their director from Training Day, Antoine Fuqua. So you can't go wrong, right? It's a good one. They are a whole bunch of bad oh. cowboys that are protecting a small town from evil thieves. It's a parade of personality and pecs. And oh. dirt. Okay. You had me a peck. Personality and pecs. <laughs> what a, love it. I've never seen the original. See the original so you understand why you need to see this new remake. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Yeah. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. Now, also, Girl on the Train. Ooh, I read that. Okay, yeah. real page turner, right? Yeah. Now, Emily Blunt stars as this woman. She's very troubled. And she sees the same woman from her seat on the train. She kind of has like a little thing in her head, a narrative going on about them. The woman disappears, and Emily Blunt doesn't know if she maybe had something to do with it, uh -huh. which is crazy. And then finally, we've got Bridget Jones' baby. That's my favorite! I love Bridget Jones! Yay! This is Bridget Jones right I, here. I love Bridget Jones. <laughs> well, and so you know in the last movie then, everything looked like it was coming up Bridget, and things were going to be great. Yeah. But that was 12 years ago, and her life has fallen apart again. I'm pulling out my Bridget Jones commemorative spanks for this one. I'm okay. so excited. <laughs> oh my gosh, the granny panties. Yes! Those are so big. Yeah. Plus, in this movie, cool. McDreamy. <laughs> Oh. oh, Jessica, tell us yes. what fall shows people are most excited about. Are you an emotional TV watcher? Yes. Okay. Well, This Is Us is the show for you. It's about all of these people who share one thing in common the same birthday. This is one of those like, get a box of tissues and get your ugly cry on because all of their lives somehow become intertwined. You have the parents who are pregnant with triplets. One of their baby dies. Uh, one of their babies die. You have a woman who's struggling with her weight. You have an actor who wants to lead a more meaningful life. You have a guy who has issues with his father. The cast is amazing. Milo Ventimiglia, Mandy Moore, oh, Sterling yes. Brown was so good on People vs. O.J. Simpson. Yes. Yeah. When this trailer premiered on Facebook, it broke broke all records. 15 nice. million views in 48 hours. Nice. Wow. It's so good. So good. Okay. We've also got Designated Survivor, which was with Kiefer Sutherland, who of course spent years as Jack Bauer, right. saving the country right and left, and now he becomes the president. He was just like the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, but there is an attack during the State of the Union, and everyone is killed off, and he's the guy. He has to become president. <laughs> Cal Penn, who is awesome, who actually took a little break from acting. Right. A lot of people know him from Harold and Kumar. He went to work for the Obama White House. He's not just starring in this show as this president's speechwriter. He's also a consultant. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Okay. And what else? And then I am so excited for Gilmore Girls. Oh, the reunion. Yeah. Yes. Ten years after the show went off the air, Lorelai and Rory Gilmore are back for four 90-minute movies on Netflix. Fans are super excited. If you watch the original series, or if you're binging it like Grey is, because we're going to finally find out how the creator, Amy Sherman Palladino, wanted to end the series. She was fired in the last season of the show. And now we're going to get to see her legendary four final words that she always... All right. Super excited.
excited. I was lucky enough to be on set. I talked to Lauren Graham about it, and I asked her about those four final words, and she was like, yeah, it's kind of weird because it's not really an ending. So read into that what you right, will. Right. Uh, and, of course, Whoopi, yes. uh, a hat tip to you because Strut is coming out yes. on Oxygen, and that is a new show about transgender models. And the, the only model they just in that new show. The only modeling agency that works exclusively with trans men and women, and I think that that's just great. Yeah, well, thank congratulations. You. That's what yes. she's yeah. producing. Yeah. So Sway. Yeah. How you doing? How are you, kid? How are you? So what do we have to look forward to in the music world? Um, there's a lot in the music world to look forward to. Kanye West, uh, self-proclaimed biggest rock star on the planet. You know, he has the St. Pablo tour coming. And, right. you know, with Kanye, you never know what you're going to get. You hmm. know, I went to the Yeezus tour, and it was, like, so theatrical. It was, like, Broadway and hip-hop right. mixed together in an arena. Right. Uh, it hasn't been announced who's going to be on that tour, but he's been embracing a lot of the good music artists. So hopefully we'll see Pusha T on that tour, Cy High the Prince, oh. be on that tour, 2 Chains, Big Two Time. Chains. We'll see them all on there. And then what you're paying for is the entertainment, but you're also paying for that rent. You know, you want to yeah. see that train wreck. So, and, you know, so hopefully we'll be able to see it. that on stage. He right? brings it. When a lot of the dates are selling it. out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right? I mean, he's been so active, uh, whether he's doing fashion shows in Madison right. Square Garden, or we know a while back he released his famous video, and I thought I would see Whoopi in there laying naked next to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. You know? He knows better. <laughs> he knows better. He knows better, right? Two quick ones, Joy, that I think you should go see. Made in America, uh, founded by the one and only Jay-Z. Um, yeah, I was there in 2012 for the inaugural concert and saw it being done in Philly at that time. They were doing Philadelphia as well as Los Angeles. Rihanna is going to be headlining oh, that tour. Oh, that's good. Uh, and that's all I really need to say, that's right? Not, that's uh, right. Really also, a Coldplay is going to be oh, on that oh, tour nice. as well. Lil Wayne to be on that tour, ASAP Ferg to be on that tour, so it's a lot to look forward to. And one of my favorites, a lot of folks may not know about this Afropunk Music Festival, and it's about lifestyle, it's about arts, it's about sports, it's about music, and Afropunk pretty much um, puts the spotlight on the punk rock scene, but uh, they call it Afropunk because it used to be divided, and there was a lot of urban kids that were doing right. punk rock that weren't getting a lot of light. There was a documentary in 2003 about it, uh, put together by this guy named James Spooner that exposed the world to this whole other audience. So, Afropunk, uh, Ice Cube, but be there. Uh, this group called, yeah. <laughs> That's a group called the Internet that I think everybody should check out. I'm not sure if you're hip to the internet, uh, to the internet, but a great group. They got an album called Eagle Death. Um, you're gonna see a lot of great performances. Not a whole lot of mainstream artists, but a lot of great artists. That's so, great. Yeah. 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 Well, it sounds like we have a lot to look forward to. A big thanks to all of you. Our thanks to Gray Drake, Jessica Shaw, and Sway Calloway. Ooh. We'll be right back. <laughs> you want to see our audience? for an interesting gadget. So right now, we're getting first look at this fall's hottest new tech items. Please welcome gadget expert Elizabeth Werner. What's happening? Thank Elizabeth? you. Thank you. What do we have? So exciting. All right, well, let's jump right in with Revelar. Now, this is a personal safety device. You'll notice how small it is. It clips onto clothing, or you can put it onto a keychain. This actually syncs up with your phone via Bluetooth. There's an app. You're going to upload five contacts into that app. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you don't feel safe, you're going to push this button. It will send notice out to all five of your contacts that you're in a situation where you're not safe. It will also send a direct GPS link to your exact location, oh, and it amazing. will continue to trail you until you release. Yeah, that'd be great if you were running wow. or something. Absolutely. And you, if you're running, you're sending a child to school. Hey, even a, a child on a field trip, sometimes My they get goodness. separated. So that would be brilliant. So you can put it anywhere on you. You can. Yeah, yeah, it comes it with a bag. clip. You can put it on. It looks like a key fob, so you can put it right on your keychain and no that. one will know. Oh, That's great. Really? Fantastic. Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What have we here right so, now? Drones are just the hottest thing out there right now. They even have drones that people will get in and ride in. So this is Lumi, and the reason I love this one is it's made it easy to fly. A lot of them you oh, try and fly, tricky. they take they, off, they're yeah. really tricky, right? So we're going to actually download an app. Our controller is our smart device. This will do a load of tricks. Also has built-in gaming, so individual games or multiplayer games, like it'll light up different colors. We have to interact with this. We can set choreography for it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you up front right here. Right. I'm going to go ahead and have this take off. There's a beacon laying next to it on the ground there. That helps keep it stabilized. Well, that's cool. And it can even do flips, which I love. Check this clip out. Woo! So amazing. Very easy to use. You can do tricks, play games. That is the drone of drones. Yeah. This is my favorite. Okay, so we all love selfie sticks. We like to take selfies. We yeah. love karaoke. Well, okay. I'm over here. We absolutely love karaoke. Well, how about the selfie, Mike? This is going to combine okay. the best of both worlds. We're going to come this way. We're going to push a button. We're going to combine by pushing this here. This will actually start the song. Come on. 
Yes. So what that I love. That was too deep for me. This is a, this say, is a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. What is this? So this is amazing. You look at this and you see a keyboard. This is the Rhino PC. Inside of this keyboard is a full PC. Windows 10, Intel processor, all built in. So when you bring this home, you're actually just going to plug it directly into your flat screen TV, oh, your smart TV, or your monitor. You have everything you need to compute from home, which I love. Now, this is under $200. Wow. Great for a home office. Great for a college student. Plug it right in, and it's ready it to go. Plugs right into your television. Plugs right into the TV. It's love got Wi-Fi. It's got Bluetooth. You can stream your favorite shows and watch love it on that. a big screen. Love that. All right. So, for Zoom, it's time yeah. to get our exercise on. Okay. So, is... Is this a, a, a exercise gadget? I don't think no. so. No. It is a virtual reality exercise gadget. So we're going to put our VR glasses on. We're going to put them down. And when we do, the only way we get to power this is by power a unicorn. Woo! I am a race car driver. Woo! We lean right. We turn right. We lean left. We turn left. It's going to monitor your heart rate. If you have a fitness tracker, right. it will work with that. All the games come free. All you have to do is pedal to get yourself going. She's what? flying. Look. <laughs> That's all you have to do. <laughs> all right, let's go. When we come back, we have one more unbelievable gadget that one member in our studio audience is going to be taking home. And if that's not enough, well, Members of our studio audience are going home with all these gadgets! All of them! Everything! Think they look excited now? Wait till... gadget that you want to show us. We're going to get to that in a second, but first we want to invite all of you at home. You can go to our Instagram account, go to at the view ABC to learn how you can enter for a chance to win every gadget that you just saw in the last segment. And audience, are you guys ready for a chance to win this next $1,500 gadget? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, so this is the X scooter. It is literally the hottest item for 2016. It's an electronic scooter. You sit on it like a bike. There it is. This actually goes 15 miles an hour. It will ride for two and a half hours continuously on a three hour charge. So literally everyone will be hot. Member is going to win this $1,500 X scooter. If you can get it from Whoopi, all right. Are you ready to give it up to somebody out here, Whoopi? Pick a number. Yeah, Joy, pick a number. Don't. You don't have to close your eyes. I can't. And the number is 135. Day. We want everybody to have a great day and take a little time to enjoy the view.